A similar situation unfolding further south at the Ambassador Bridge in Detroit. Our Team 7 coverage continues now with 7 Action News reporter Kim Russell with what businesses are doing to keep supplies moving with their trucks trapped on the bridge. I'm in front of the Ambassador Bridge and this is an unusual site. You can see that there are no trucks going across the bridge, no traffic. Some say this is what protest looks like. Others say this is what the loss of money looks like. If you take a look at just the economic activity created by auto parts going across the border, Detroit Regional Chamber President and Chief Executive Officer Sandy Barua says it's staggering. That's about $320 million a day of economic activity. So where would you go if you needed to ship something ASAP across the border in this scenario? With a name like ASAP Express, we figured this company at Detroit Metro might be getting some phone calls. We are having to turn uh, some of our business uh, away. Doug Kenedjian is president and CFO of ASAP Express. He says with such short notice, there's not much that can be done. It's possible to send by plane, but not many customers are asking for that. We are um, having to reroute our loads through both the Blue Water Bridge and the Marie International Bridge. He says before the protest, his company was already being hurt by the vaccine mandates for international travel. You have to be vaccinated to go into Canada, and uh, only 40% of our driver base uh, are vaccinated. And uh, so that's, you know, this other 60% that move freight in Canada cannot move freight in Canada right now. There is a rail tunnel that goes under the Detroit River to Windsor, but changing how you move stuff takes manpower. Barua says the economic impact goes beyond just trade. Yeah, even if you're not worried about the GM, Ford, and Stellantis plants, there's all these small businesses, the businesses that supply parts to these uh, large manufacturing facilities, they're shut down. The leader of the Detroit Regional Chamber says he is getting a lot of calls from businesses asking what they can do to help end this because it is costing them a lot of money. He says it's not a business issue. It's a law enforcement issue in Canada. Kim Russell, 7 Action News.